Hello and welcome back. Well, I've been interested for a long time in the way that typewriters were used back in their heyday. And I liken this to how film cameras were used back in their heyday, and there are a current generation of people that are still interested in film cameras, rediscovering them or discovering them for the first time. But what we really appreciate about the era of film are the images and the prints made by the great photographers of that day. And if you extend that analogy to the world of typewriters, what fascinates me is the documents that were typed with typewriters back in the heyday of typewriters. And I really find it fascinating to look and study the original documents or online samples, pictures you might find on the internet of documents here and there of all kinds, really, anonymous, maybe uh, administrative documents or letters from famous writers or other people in society or notorious or very famous typewritten documents, perhaps governmental documents or whatever. So all of that really kind of fascinates me. But also, there are certain machines that were used for many of these documents, and one in particular I'd like to talk about. This is the folding Corona 3. What I like about original typewritten documents is not only does the formatting of the document harken back to an original age, but often the style of prose, the style of the writing itself, sounds distinctively from that era. And I've been interested in pursuing what I call reproduction typing, which is finding an online copy of an original typewritten document and trying to find a machine from your collection that has a similar typeface and maybe finding period or close to period paper, trying to reproduce the document as close as possible to get a sense of what it was like to write those documents, maybe by reproducing the document the way it was formatted, typing the very words, perhaps we get a sense of what it was like to be in that era and to write those documents. And this gets us to the Corona 3, because few historic uses of typewriters are as dramatic as the British and American militaries using Corona 3s in the trenches of the Great War in Europe, of World War I. The Corona 3 was used by officers in both the British and American militaries to type up their daily action reports. And there are online samples of these action reports, and it is a very dramatic thought to consider hunched over on a little table or on the optional tripod base that some of these typewriters came with, pecking out a daily action report with the din of shells falling all around you and men dying. What a dramatic use of these humble little typewriters. And so what I thought would be fun would be to look for some of these online documents, these daily action reports, and then maybe try to find some outdoor location. Uh, I'm not going to be dressing up as a doughboy, and I probably won't be going into a trench, but perhaps I can find an outdoor setting, sit down, and try typing up one of those documents. I can only imagine what it must have been like to have been in the Great War in the fields of Europe, maybe France or Belgium, and having to pull out this little small rickety typewriter every day if you were an officer and type up a daily action report of the activities of the enemy and of your platoon or your group and any casualties you might have suffered having to do that day in and day out. It's a different experience doing so out here in the peacefulness of the American West. But I really highly recommend it if you have a small portable typewriter, take a small folding table and chair, or just a way to find yourself to be able to sit down out in the wilderness and 
do some contemplating and typing outside, thinking about all those men who fought in those wars and died. Well, the Corona 3 is not the kind of a machine that you would want to use for long-form writing, but in World War I, it was one of the few portable typewriters available, and because it was a folding typewriter and came in a rather small case and was lightweight, it was the perfect tool for writing out in the field when modern militaries required the efficiency of typewritten documents in the field, the field of combat. Well, we don't know exactly what typewriter was used to type this narrative of operations from First Lieutenant Perry here. With my typewriter, I have a number one, whereas the typewriter he was using, he used a lowercase l instead. So mine is a 1930 Corona Special. It could have been that these Corona 3s, the early ones, didn't have a number one, perhaps. It's also possible it was, of course, a different typewriter. What I did think is interesting, though, on several occasions here where he types the time, right here at 12, instead of using a colon, he uses a period. So maybe his typewriter didn't have the colon symbol. We also see up here at 8 p.m. he does the same thing. Instead of using a colon, he uses a period. Period. So it's possible it was an earlier Corona 3 that didn't have the colon and the number 1, or it could have been a different typewriter. So this was the one that I chose to do the reproduction typing with. So you notice he spells out the word battalion here several times actually, but then down toward the bottom he uses a uh, initialization for battalion aid post, so battalion is BN instead. So I think it's interesting uh, how he uses some abbreviations at certain points. And then there are a few typographical inconsistencies. For instance, right here, these two names separated by a hyphen he doesn't put a space between the hyphen and the Y, whereas over here, he does put a space before and after the hyphen. So just a little bit of typing inconsistency, which you would expect imperfect typing in the heat of battle. And I should point out that these letters here and here are map grid coordinates that he's referring to. So when he's making this report, they look on the map and they see what areas he's talking about. And being as how First Lieutenant Perry belonged to the 120th Infantry. He was an adjutant to the infantry. I'm assuming it could have been that one of his primary duties was typing up reports. So let's take a look at a few of the features of the humble Corona 3 that might have made it an efficient tool for report typing in the battlefield. Well, first of all, the Corona 3 did have a single and double line spacing position which was quite handy because some documents might have required double spacing, maybe some single spacing. It made it a little bit more efficient that way. The Corona 3 did have a bichrome setting, so this is the black setting, like that, the top half of the ribbon, and you flip this lever to the right, and it has the red setting. It types on the bottom half of the ribbon as well. So I don't really know if uh, red was used that often, but it would certainly give officers in the field with an all-black ribbon the opportunity to double the endurance of their ribbon should it start to wear out. The Corona 3, like a lot of Coronas from the, that era, also has the paper fingers on both sides of the carriage, and these can be adjusted for whatever width of paper is being used, obviously requires some kind of a margin. It requires, in order to hold the paper properly, you have to move it in a little bit from the edge of the paper. But oftentimes, back in that era, documents had a very wide margin on both the left and the right side, so the paper fingers weren't really a problem with most normal size pieces of paper. And although the Corona 3 did not have an automatic ribbon reversing system, what you had to do was to loosen the nut on one side and tighten it on the other in order to change the direction of the ribbon. So when you got down toward the end, you would just change which one was tight, which one was loose. And because the ribbon wasn't completely enclosed in a holder or a case or a, a spool, you could see when you were getting down to the end of the ribbon. As humble of a typewriter as the Corona 3 is, it still had a margin release control here. 
and a backspace lever here. While the sample of Corona 3 I have is from after the Great War, this is from 1930, and it has the extra set of figure and caps shift keys on the right, the original Corona 3 had a single set on the left, but it was a three bank typewriter, which means that you had the cap shift here and figure shift here. And being in the battlefield, a very mobile and dangerous situation, needing a very lightweight typewriter, this is what makes it very handy for battlefield use, is the fact that it folds up like that and goes into its small case like that. Well, I've singled out the Corona 3 as an example of a machine that was used to type lots of documents in very dramatic situations back in the early 20th century, but when we're talking generically about reproduction typing of historic documents, also you might think of full-sized office machines. Think of all the millions of documents that were typed on big standard typewriters by secretaries back in the day of all kinds of different branches of the military and business and government. So there's plenty of opportunity here, I think, to explore this idea of reproduction typing, finding those historic documents and having fun typing them up. We find in this world of reproduction typing, not just ordinary documents, administrative documents from large bureaucracies or personal letters from famous writers to their editors or movie stars to their agents or whatever, but other documents that are more notorious. I thought this was an interesting topic. This is something I hope to explore in the future as I personally explore reproducing a lot of historic documents just for the sake of seeing what it was like to type them on a period correct machine. And I think this is an interesting avenue of creativity, is using our typewriters to get a sense of what it was like to use them back in their heyday. I'd love to hear your comments about this down below. Please drop a comment. I'd love to talk to you about it. In any event, I wish you the very best. Stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.